Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Jeremy and Lily here. As you know, I've created a passive income stream of over $55,000 a month in rental property income, and my portfolio is worth over $7.5 million. I've done all this while working a full-time job, and on my channel, we're going to teach you how you can do it too. Right, Lily? For those of you who've been watching my channel since January when we started, you'll notice that those numbers have increased by $5,000 on the rent income and a million dollars on the portfolio value. That's because I've been actively investing in new properties and the values of my properties have also been increasing a lot recently. So in today's video, we want to touch on the eviction moratorium that was set to expire on June that's been extended. We also want to talk about the foreclosure moratorium, its extension, the mortgage forbearance, the deadlines for it as well. We also want to talk about the $45 billion in the CARES Act to provide rent relief for tenants and landlords and is that finally being distributed oh and a quick thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel since January I have no idea that the channel would pick up as quickly as it has so far we've received over 250 comments a thousand likes 2,000 hours of watch time and 15,000 views again thank you so much for your support instead of asking you to smash the like button today I've got a special request if all of you could go to votegco.com and click vote on greater Chattanooga orthodontics it would really help my fiance who's trying to win best orthodontist in the Chattanooga area and it would help keep me out of the doghouse so thank you for that so as most of you know the CDC had an eviction moratorium that was set to expire at the end of June that has been extended through July 30th let's take a look at this clip well the federal moratorium on evictions is expiring at the end of next month that's July 31st and state and local governments are already preparing for the flood of eviction lawsuits that are coming their way. We're joined now by Peter Hepburn, Rutgers University, Newark Department of Sociology and Anthropology Assistant Professor, and Yahoo Finance's Alexis Keenan. Thank you both for joining us. So, Peter, I want to start with what happens on August 1st after that uh, moratorium expires. After it expires, are we going to be facing essentially at large a large scale? homeless crisis? You know, I don't, I don't think it's going to translate into homelessness immediately by any means. But come August 1st, renters nationwide will have the fewest protections available to them since the start of the pandemic. Um, there are a few states that will still have eviction moratoria on the books, but in the vast majority of states, renters will not have any uh, further protections available to them. Peter, this is Alexis here. I want to actually take a look at those states that you're talking about. We're talking about five states in the U.S. plus D.C. have so far adopted protections against eviction. That's uh, Hawaii, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, and California. So is it your impression that not enough is being done here? Why are we seeing just five states have measures in place? Is that going to be enough to uh, keep the eviction flood from happening? Oh, well, I mean, I, I think you've got to recognize that at this point we are you know, 16 months into a pandemic and there is a Very lot good. of a lot of these governments want things to return to normal and are hoping to sort of restart business as usual. But at this point, we still know that there are inefficiencies in getting emergency rental assistance out to, to renters and to landlords, maintaining the CDC eviction moratorium for another month and maintaining state level moratoria for some time thereafter provides a little bit more time for that money to make it out to affected parties. I want to stop on that for a minute. If you haven't seen my couple of recent videos with Tim Shaw, who's an investor, a broker, and also an attorney, he's already received one large check from the CARES Act for the rent relief for his tenants, and he's expecting another large one. And just this last week, I received an email from one of my tenants who's applied for the relief, and I clicked on the email and filled out my parts to get started. I also took that email with that link and forwarded it to another one of my tenants who got behind a little and left. So two of my tenants got behind and moved out, but they still have a balance that they owe me. They're trying to use this federal relief money to take care of their balance. I'll put a link to the Tennessee site as well as the Georgia site in the notes below. It's my understanding that states have until the end of September to use this money or they have to give it back to the federal government. Professor, I wanted to um, get your thoughts on um, something that's before the Supreme Court. Earlier this this month, a group of uh, home uh, property owners had asked the high court to block the CDC from extending the moratorium on evictions. I think in cases like these, the landlords are, are sort of seen as the bad guys, uh, but uh, they too have responsibilities and bills to pay. So what should and could the government be doing right now to extend help to those landlords and take some of the pressure off. You know, I, I think it's important to recognize that that Congress has um, has already taken steps to help landlords. Um, over forty six billion dollars in emergency rental assistance 
has been provided as a part of the Consolidated Appropriations Act December of last year and of the American Rescue Plan of March of this year. Where governments have struggled is in getting that money out to landlords. Exactly. Some uh, state and, and local governments have been able to get that money out more effectively than others. We're kind of waiting to see how effectively uh, the remainder of that money will be able to, to make it out the door. They made a couple of good points. I've gotten some colorful comments on the channel, and people tend to think that landlords are just loaded and they should be able to absorb this and give it away for free. Statistically, over half of landlords are just ma and pa guys, small guys that might own one or two rental houses. Small landlords are not some giant corporation who can just absorb no rent for a year and a half. And so landlords are hurting. Uh, we've also seen, in the case of California, a real investment on the part of the states in making even more money available. And, and ultimately, that's money that's going to, to landlords and will help to prop up a lot of property managers who have perhaps struggled during this last 16 months. Peter, you talk about the federal government making that $46.5 billion in emergency rental assistance available to the states. But you've also spoken about how it's allocated to the states and distributed being flawed. So why exactly is that? What's the problem there? Congress chose to allocate this money on the basis of state population overall, uh, without taking into account the fact that some states have proportionally more renters than others, or taking into account, for instance, that it costs more to rent a typical apartment in some states than others. Um, so, for instance, here in here in New York, uh, there are quite a lot of renter households and median rent is is quite high. By comparison, smaller states um, that receive minimum payment often have proportionally very few renter households and the, the cost of renting is, is very low. So there are going to be some larger states and, and states that were hit quite hard by the pandemic that are receiving much less assistance on a per renter household basis. And that's probably why California is stepping in to give some of their own funds to supplement that. Uh, you know, inevitably, that means that, that fewer resources are available and harder decisions need to be made about who can access that money and who, who gets left out in the cold. All right. We have to leave that there. Peter Hepburn, assistant professor at Rutgers University, Newark. Yahoo Finance's Alexis Keenan. Thank you both for joining us. I also want to show you this clip from Jason Walter on YouTube. It's on the eviction moratorium, but also the foreclosure and loan forbearance. Hey, welcome back. It's Jason Walter here. The big news yesterday was the extension of the foreclosure and eviction moratoriums that were set to expire at the end of the month. The CDC extended the eviction moratorium until the end of July. This gives renters an additional month of protection. But I actually found the official press release on this CDC's website and it stated the following. The moratorium was scheduled to expire on June 30th, 2021, is now extended through July 31st, 2021. And this is intended to be the final extension of this moratorium. And it's great that they're saying that to people so they can say, hey, this is the last call. It's also great that this is going to happen before we get into the winter. And of course, they wouldn't want to kick people out in the middle of the winter and it would get extended again and so on. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented a historic threat to the nation's public health, keeping people in their houses and out of crowded or congregate settings like homeless shelters by preventing evictions is a key step in helping to stop the spread of COVID-19. I also noticed that the Biden administration also announced that the foreclosure moratorium of federally backed mortgages is extended until the end of July as well. This applies to homeowners who have a FHA loan, a VA loan, a USDA loan, or a loan that's backed by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. It states on the federal house. So that would exclude something like, I've got a couple of commercial loans that are by local banks. Those would be excluded from those. Seen finance agency's website that the foreclosure moratorium of loans that are backed by Fannie or Freddie only applies to single family mortgages only. Here's a key point regarding these mm -hmm. moratorium extensions. It states the following. Interesting. Both the federal eviction and foreclosure extensions are intended to be the final ones that renters and homeowners receive. So if you caught that, it wouldn't catch uh, duplex, triplex, or quadplex. On top of this, the deadline for homeowners to request an initial 12-month forbearance period has also been extended. I also noticed that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's website updated that website today. So it says that if your loan is backed by HUD, FHA, USDA, or VA. The deadline for requesting initial forbearance is extended until September 30th, 
2021. So that's a great point. There's still time if you're a homeowner or even if you're a landlord, let's say you have tenants who are not paying. One of our subscribers who is a realtor and a uh, beginner investor is actually using the forbearance on his loan for his mortgage. This was a house he used to live in and he's made it his first rental, which is a great way to get started. And he's done a forbearance on the mortgage. Even though his tenants are paying well, that's allowing him to save up his mortgage payments so that he can use that for a down payment on buying his next one. The previous deadline was June 30th, 2021. For homeowners who have a mortgage backed by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, there still is not a deadline to request an initial forbearance, so that has not changed. I also found the official announcement on the White House's website, and I want to share that with you. So it says at the very end of this press release that they will extend the foreclosure moratorium for one final month until July 31st, 2021 for federally backed mortgages. And here's something very important here because here's some changes. So it says once the foreclosure moratorium ends, HUD, VA, and USDA will take additional steps to prevent foreclosures on mortgages backed by those agencies until borrowers are reviewed for COVID-19 streamlined loss mitigation options that are affordable. So right there, they're basically saying, it's not over, guys. We're going to try. We're going to have more things coming to keep you from going into foreclosure. So that's really good news for people. FHFA, that's for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, will continue to work with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to ensure that borrowers are evaluated for home retention solutions prior to any referral to foreclosure. In addition, HUD, VA, and USDA will continue to allow homeowners who have not taken advantage of forbearance to enter into a COVID-related forbearance through September 30th, 2021, while homeowners with Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac back mortgages who have COVID-related hardships will continue to be eligible for COVID-related forbearance. And here's a key part. Finally, HUD, VA, and USDA will be announcing additional steps in July to offer borrowers payment reduction options that will enable more homeowners to stay in their houses. In this press release, they did That's not good. provide any additional information about these additional protections, but I'll definitely keep you posted when we get more information available. Meanwhile, Congress has allocated $45 billion in so that's going to help to keep from having an avalanche of foreclosures at the end of the July. They're going to continue to provide solutions to help people from being foreclosed on. Rental assistance, but that money has been painfully slow to reach people. And meanwhile, it's been reported that 10 million Americans are still behind on their rent. Mm -hmm. All right, so before I share some more updates regarding so mortgage loan forbearance numbers, let me first share some options for renters. If you're a renter and you want to know if you're eligible for rental assistance, then CNBC has a really good breakdown as follows. To get protection from eviction, you have to attest on a declaration form that you meet a few requirements, such as you earned less than $99,000 in 2020 or 2021. You also need to have experienced a financial hardship during this pandemic, such as high medical expenses or reduction in hours at work. Renters are also required to confirm that an eviction could lead them to becoming homeless or needing to double up with family or others and that they have tried to apply for rental assistance. This form should also go to your landlord. If you're already facing eviction, then you should seek legal counsel ASAP or you can go to lawhelp.org to find low cost or free legal help. If you're a renter, an investor, or a homeowner, and you're experiencing a financial hardship, then of course my heart goes out to you and I want to help. So I'm gonna be providing some links below. Um, some of those websites would be knowyouroptions.com and the CFPB's website as well. Let me give you an update regarding mortgage loan forbearance numbers. The MBA just announced a couple of days ago that the share of homeowners in forbearance dropped to 3.93%, which represents about 2 million homeowners. This is actually a huge improvement over last year because the number of homeowners in forbearance peaked in May of 2020 when 4.7 million people were in forbearance. At that time, that equated to 8.8% of all U.S. mortgages. Also, according to the MBA, the share of loans in forbearance has now dropped for the 16th straight week. In addition, more than 44% of borrowers who exited this week used a deferral plan highlighting the importance of this option. 
that percentage of 44% is quite a bit higher than the overall percent of people who have exited forbearance ever since June of 2020. And I mentioned on a previous video that I did a forbearance on most of my loans. I ended up repaying about half of those just because it was so much hassle and they would call all the time. It would show up as past due on my statements and I, I didn't like the way that looked. And then the other half, they just deferred them to the end of their loans. Potentially be a good option for people exiting forbearance because the loan deferral program is when the lender adds all the missed payments to the back end of the loan. In other words, your term of your loan gets extended, but your mortgage payment remains the same. Speaking of options after people end their forbearance plans, uh, the MBA actually posts a really good update on a weekly basis about what people do when they exit forbearance. So let me share that with you right now. Out of all the homeowners who have ended their forbearance plans, for the time period June 1st, 2020 through June 13th, 2021, 27.6% resulted in a loan deferral or a partial claim. Remember, that was 44% this week, so it's good to see that more people are taking advantage of this option more recently. In addition, 24% represented borrowers who continued to make their monthly mortgage payments during their forbearance period, even though they didn't have to, and then 15.3% represented borrowers who did not make all their monthly payments and exited forbearance without a loss mitigation plan in place yet. This is not good. For these folks, they should contact the loan servicer ASAP in order to enter into a payment plan. 13.8% uh, resulted in reinstatements in which past due amounts are paid back when exiting forbearance. Yep. In other words, this is a one-time lump sum payment, which is not required if you have a federally backed mortgage. Additionally, 10.2% resulted in a loan mod or a trial loan mod. 7.5% resulted in loans paid off either through either a refi or selling their house. And the remaining 1.5% resulted in repayment plans, short sales, deeds in lieu of foreclosures or other reasons. I want to add something. Tim Shaw, friend of the channel, sent me a link to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And they have a nice little list of if you're going to do the loan forbearance to look for these things and ask these questions. Back when the, my different lenders were giving me the different options, I don't feel like they were giving me all these options that they're required to give. This short list will show you the options where, for example, you can just add the money to the end of the loan. And that's very simple, easy, not. And if you can do that, I would recommend doing it. I think I felt like a few of the lenders didn't mention that option. And so I just went ahead and paid them all the back payments. I'll add a link to that in the notes below. What I personally found to be very frustrating is that every time they announce an extension of these moratoriums, it was very hard to decipher when it was actually going to expire. This is because they kept it very open-ended. So renters and homeowners had a really hard time planning what their next steps were going to be. Every time it was extended, it would say the moratorium extension was until at least December 31st or until at least January 31st and so on. Regardless if you're for or against these moratoriums, at least we know this is intended to be the final extension. Thank you, Jason. Love your channel. So this is the Federal Housing Finance Agency site, and they're just showing that they're extended both the foreclosure and eviction moratorium through July 30th. Here's the site that Tim Shaw sent and wanted me to share with you guys. It's from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. It's got some nice little sections and videos on help for homeowners, help for renters, and help for landlords. And they go through the rental assistance, the evictions. So for struggling landlords, this goes through a lot of things about getting help from local programs, staying in control of your property so you don't lose it, and then asking for a forbearance on your loan on that property, like I mentioned. Something that wasn't mentioned today was that this whole CDC eviction more moratorium is actually being challenged by the courts all the way up to the Supreme Court. Some states are not even recognizing this and some local jurisdictions are and are not. If you haven't seen Tim Shaw take on this, I'll put a link at the top for you to watch his video. As an attorney, he's been doing evictions this year and all of last year. If you have to process an eviction and you need an attorney and your attorney says that he can't because of this moratorium, I think what Tim is saying is you need to find another attorney. And if you're in the Tennessee and Georgia area, I'll put Tim's contact info below. I post weekly, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll know when the next video is out. And every time you hit the like button and make a comment, you'll be entered to win a pair of Apple AirPod Pros that we're giving to one of our first 1,000 subscribers. Oh, and although I'm a licensed CPA and have three business degrees, I'm just a guy on YouTube with my dog. So please check with your professionals before making any investment decisions. Until next time, I hope you have a great week. Thank you.